Okay, well, let's kick the video off with the bad stuff. Um, there were four tarantulas that have died uh, over the over the course of August, through August anyway. Um, Cerecopelma melanotarsum uh, melanota was the first one. Uh, again, I thought that one was in pre-molt. Um, it dug itself a nice hole, a nice burrow. I could see it, and a couple days later, it was curled up dead. Um, on your left, this is the one that bugs me the most. Well, actually, the Cerecopelma does too, because it's a very, very pretty spider. The one on the left is my Megapoboma mesomasalis. Um, I don't know if it was the heat, you know, over the course of August that, that did this one in or not, but uh, we're going to get another one. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, I don't want to say it's not that big of a deal, but, you know, you're going to have deaths in your collection, and uh, so you just sometimes just have to figure out a way to, to try and understand maybe how and why and correct those issues but a lot of times it's not you and it's not your husbandry it's not it, it's just a you know sometimes the, the spiders are weak and this happens um, the middle one is the mature male obt um, that was the one that i paired and, and this happens uh, quite frequently i believe with mature males <clears throat> um, not all the time but there there are a vast majority of them that will mate and if the mating's good for some odd reason they just don't they don't recover. She, he wasn't tagged or anything. He was fine for about five or six days. He was still crawling all over the place and dug himself a hole, but then he kind of went in it and then he curled up and uh, died. Uh, he died just two days ago. And the one on the right is my Pteranochila species of Rusha. That one I don't get at all, honestly, um, because that one was, was an eating machine. It was doing perfectly fine. Thought for sure it was in pre molt and it just. I found it curled up, um, and I don't know. I had the same exact problem with my Pteranochilus cordatus, and, and I do believe that these are probably pretty much similar uh, tarantulas if they're not even the same exact thing. Um, it, it, it went in a pre-molt, and you could see it was in pre-molt, and it was doing perfectly fine, and then I check on it a couple days later, and it's curled up, and, and it's already gone. So, <clears throat> yeah, so this is the bad part. Uh, we have some other great things to come. Uh, well, not a bunch of them, but... We got some tarantulas that have molted, and we're going to be moving a bunch of stuff today. I hope. Um, I have so many enclosures open now, and, and I have two two uh, juvenile tarantulas being shipped out tomorrow with a couple small slings. Um, so it's going to free up a couple more enclosures too. So uh, we do have. I, I did. That uh, we'll get into the the good parts here in a second. Okay, so we have a like an oil house out in uh, the back of our plant, and I always seem to find the steatoda uh, species out there, uh, the false widows. <clears throat> so I decided to make a small communal because they were all living like pretty much on the same web in the same little area. So I decided to put them in this container and then bring them home and see how they do, how they how they act. Um, uh, we find a ton of these in the fall, especially, and there's an egg sac inside here too. So, uh, just <clears throat> kind of an experiment, see how things, uh, how they progress, how they interact, you know, how they, how they live together in close proximity, how they share food, things of that nature. Um, <clears throat> it looks like one, one may have already died uh, or been killed. I don't know. They. I've watched these these two here. And there's another one down in the leaves, and then there's a smaller one down there too. And they've they they kind of get a little agitated with each other when they're real real close to each other. But other than that, um, they seem to be okay. So uh, if, if they start to really get into it with each other, I'll separate them into separate little enclosures and, and let them go, or let them let them be in that in that enclosure let them do their thing and uh, actually I probably end up doing that anyway and I'll show you why here in one second so I, I just got in a whole bunch of these 50 dram vials I love these things uh, we're gonna be moving a lot of spiders into these because it even though if they're smaller it gives them much more room it's a little bit easier for me to work with than you know having one in this and you know these are the two well this is one of the two uh, Seriopogopus species hotty hotty that are in here um, so if I fill this up halfway with uh, with dirt, it gives them more room to do what they need to do. Uh, I, I, and I don't have to worry about just 
hurry up, flip the top off, throw some food in there, and hope that they don't take off on me. They'll be more secure in something like this. So there'll be quite a few um, moving into this. Um, uh, the yeah, that that's it. You know, my piece of Theria Metallica will move into one of these. Um, maybe the Dolichothelia diamantinensis. I don't know. I think I might put that one into a baseball enclosure. Uh, try to think of what I have up there. Oh, my Imira will move into one of these, and, and there's a couple other ones up there that definitely are going to move into into these enclosures. And then I'm going to have a bunch of these left over. Um, Amy had ordered ordered these. We were going to go halves on an order, and uh, she had ordered a hundred, and I was like, well, I could use like three dozen of them, and and I have them laying around. They're good for shipping. You know, you can. I'll ship the juveniles, one of the juveniles in one of these. Um, and I said, they're always good to have around, you know, just in case. I have this one as a catch cup, you know. It's got the holes in it. You guys have seen this a million times. I'll probably make another one of these. <clears throat> um, but, but she ordered 100, and she got, she got 80 of them free. So I, that was pretty cool, the company that sent them. So... Yeah, so I have, I think she's got 35 of them that fit into a box. So, yeah, so we're going to be moving some stuff into these. We're going to be moving some stuff into the baseball cube, out of baseball cubes, into softball cubes, out of softball cubes, into the 124th scale die cast stuff. So, um, we'll be looking forward to that. Uh, there's, I'm going to try and get it done today because I have off work today because it's Labor Day. So, uh, yeah, so let's, let's look at a few spiders that have molted recently. Okay, so here is one of the ones that have <coughs> recently molted. Um, as a matter of fact, it's really the only one that's out of the ones that just molted. This is the Canthus Gria Gina Colada. This is Ash. I'm not quite sure what we have because the molt was a little bit mangled uh, in that area. Not from her molting or him molting because I, I was able to get the molt out pretty quickly, but just um, trying to pin it down. Um, stretching it kind of popped that spot where you really really need to see and I really couldn't tell so I didn't really want to call it male or female or even sus suspect anything because there wasn't enough there for me to see uh, this one's probably ready to eat I would imagine um, this one would most likely probably take food so let's see if I can't possibly get it him or her to uh, possibly take a worm here oh yeah <clears throat> so yep one of my favorite this is one of my favorites uh, when I first really started getting heavy into it was the coloring of these Canthoscria gina coladas is just superb and the patterning the striations on the the patellas there and, and just the overall coloring period <clears throat> I had to I gave one to my brother so um, I, I do believe between the two of us we actually probably both have females I think they're both females but I don't really want to to call that so that's one let's well, you can watch her eat or him eat while we go over the other ones, really. The Ceratogyrus meridionalis molted. The molt is still in there. I'm going to shag that out of there and, and uh, try and sex that one, possibly. Um, the Uapalacious campostratus female molted again, which is kind of surprising because it hasn't been that long since she molted the last time. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I think I only fed her twice. Uh, it's only been a couple months since she molted. I was actually really, really shocked. Um, I kind of, no, I wasn't really shocked that she molted that quickly. Um, well, yeah, I was that quickly. It was, I mean, I kind of knew because she did start to darken and um, she didn't want to eat the last time I fed her and that's not like her at all. So, <clears throat> so she molted. Um, well, I know there's others that molted and I just, off the top of my head, I'm not remembering now. Well, if I think about it, we'll, we'll update it in the rest of the video. Um, we did pair the Nandu Colorado Velosis one, excuse me, one time. 
I'm going to try them again in a few days um, just to be sure um, because I tried pairing them like three times prior to that and they didn't want to have anything to do with each other uh, no aggression no nothing no tapping he just sat there she just stayed in her burrow and after about an hour I took him out put him back in his home put him back a couple days later did that three times and then finally um, I was actually talking to the owner of the male when I put him back in there because she's like why don't we just put them together and leave them together for a couple days and see what happens so I was chatting with her on messenger and uh, I had put him in and I turned around and looked and they were already pairing so that's that's good um, it looked successful I mean he really he started to clean his pedipulps right away um, she went in her burrow afterwards so I don't know if she she did a, an epigastrous rub or anything. Um, we'll find out when I try putting him in there again. If she shows aggression, then, then we'll know. I just don't want her to eat him because I know that Allie from Allie's tarantulas wants to borrow him and mate with his female. So i got to figure out from Kelly what she wants to do. Um, but I would like to try at least pair them one more time just to be sure. Uh, <clears throat> i got to feed the little guys today. One Lassiodora difficilis and a handful of Lassiodora paribonis um, that we still have. Well, there's more than a handful. There's 10, 11 paribonis. Two of them are going out, so we'll be down to nine. Uh, we got to feed the little hottie hotties and a couple of the other small little slings. Um, I think that's it for. Tarantulas that have molted. Now, I haven't done a check in a couple days, so there may be a few more. So if there are, we'll update them later. Uh, my favorite one, though, is the Myriad Analysis. This little one is, is just going crazy. Matter of fact, let's, let's open it up and see if we can't get that one to feed, because I really do believe it will. Okay, so let's see what happens. Um, you can see the molt right at through 12 o'clock. Well, not quite 12 o'clock. It would be actually in the center of the clock there. Um, but we're going to throw this worm in, and he's gonna, or she's going to be over here. Let's see if we'll come out and get it. You can see all the holes this one has now. Nope, I'm going to come out from below. There is a burrow. You're going to see the spiders coming out right there. Okay, that burrow goes all the way across to the top corner. I don't want you digging there. There we go. Quick and easy takedown. While we're doing that, we'll get the molt out. Hopefully we might be able to sex that. We'll give this guy a second because he likes to come back out with his food and do a little bit of work up top. But um, I wanted to rehouse this one, but I don't think it grew enough that it's necessary. So we're going to wait one more molt before we get into a 124 scale die cast enclosure. Um, because the, really, they, the die-cast enclosures are really only about two times as long as this. But these seem to be just a little bit wider. I, maybe not. I don't know. It seems that way. No, they're not because i got a softball enclosure sitting right on top of a 124 scale. I think I could put two of these on top of, of a 124 scale. But there's no, no need to move him right now or her right now in this enclosure. It's just not, not big enough to do that. There are a couple I'm going to move that are smaller. Um, only because I want them to be in an enclosure that they're probably going to be in for quite a while, and that would be the Harpactera pulchropes. Oh, that one molted. Um, I do believe that one to be male. Um, I don't remember if I updated that one for you guys or not. Um, yeah, so we're not coming out, are we? We have a handful that are closing in on molts. The Nandu carapoensis, uh, Gramostola pulchropes, the Stycoplastorus species Nicaragua or the Corn Island, <coughs> um, the Samopeus Cambridgei is also uh, closing in on a molt, and I think Declan, the male um, Bacchicama albopelosum is also closing in on a molt, so it uh, looks like a couple of those small uh, Tidius uh, stigmaris also um, are closing in on molts, the uh, scorpions, little scorpions that I got from 
um, Jay from Bluegrass Inverts. Uh, I know he was supposed to do a video this weekend. I hope he did it because he, he, he's got some updates to do, and I was looking forward to some of the stuff that he was going to talk about. And um, well, This one's not going to come out this time. I thought for sure it would. It always does. So we'll try and feed um, somebody else. Um, oh, I know who else molted. Hold on. Okay, you can barely, barely, barely see in that hole there, but this is the uh, Cercopelma rubronitans. This is the first one that I got from Ruth. Um, this was a gift from, geez, was it the Buffalo Show last year? Not this past one in the spring, but the one, you know, last year in the, in the spring. Um, she gave me this little one out of one of her pairings, and... I do believe this one to be male. The, the molt had nothing in it that would even remotely present female to me. But, you know, I am only looking at it on a 15, 15 times um, magnification, so there could be something there that I'm not seeing with, with higher magnification. But uh, I didn't see male accessory organs or anything like that either, so it's still a possibility, but it's highly, I, I'm pretty sure we have a male here. And this one looks uh, almost like, exactly like a Brachypelma vagans. Um, I mean, to a T. Well, that's another one that's going to be molting soon, my female Brachypelma vagans. If she hasn't, nope, she hasn't yet. She's closing in on that too, so I imagine that's going to be sometime soon. We're going to spray her, uh, half of her enclosure down and give her some water and see if that'll prompt her to, to get through or start to get into her molt, um, a little bit sooner than later. Um, yeah, this one molted, I don't know, four three, four days ago. We're not ready to eat yet, but uh, I wish that it was out. It was just out, but of course when, you know, you grab the enclosure, it went into its little burrow there and it's hiding again. Uh, beautiful. Be very, very beautiful. Vibrant red colors on the abdomen. Uh, beautiful black, you know, real, real deep black coloring on the legs. And uh, the carapace, I'm not quite sure that I remember what the carapace looked like. You got molted you up there? Nope. Cycloplast doors still hasn't molted. Um, my praying mantis is still doing good. Um, matter of fact, I'll show you that guy here real quick. Okay, so we're going to end with this one. We have scattered sunlight streaks and then the overhead light actually that's on her right now. Probably doesn't even need to be on sunlight. Probably be sufficient um, sunlight coming in through the window. Um, yeah, I, I'm Again, I, I'm very, very appreciative of everybody getting, you know, 1,500 subscribers is, is it's a lot of people, if you really think about it. If you put those 1,500 people in a room and stand up there in front of them, that's kind of daunting, really. Um, and it's really, really exciting. Uh, I know there's still a ton of people that watch the videos that aren't subscribed. I had a couple of people actually say, oh, we don't, we love watching your videos. We just never subscribe to anybody, which is, you know, that's cool, too. Um, views are just as important as subscribers are. Um, but, uh, again, we're going to have a, we have some announcements coming up, and we'll do that in a separate video. I don't want to give that all the way here. Um, and then I think the next series of videos, are we're going to finish off the South American tour video. So we'll, we'll do Bolivia, um, Peru, um, Argentina, French, or not French, yeah, French Guiana, Suriname, Uruguay, Paraguay, uh, Uruguay, Paraguay, uh, Chile. I think that's all that's left in South America of, of the animals that I have. A couple of them will be in one or two videos because they hail from both places or they'll, they'll cross borders. So um, you'll see them in, in you know each video, at least one of them anyway. Um, some other stuff that I'm sure people are interested to know and you'll see... Um, You'll see Norman, uh, my Brazilian black, or the uh, Gramostola pulchra in the Uruguay video because they also, I think it's Uruguay, way, yeah, they also um, are endemic to Uruguay, not just Brazil. So uh, I know a lot of people are worried about that one specifically because it's Brazil, um, but they are found, I believe, do also they are, are found in Uruguay. So hopefully that won't po pose a problem. And then we're going to be doing our our first podcast, uh, I might even try to do that today, a uh, short 5 to 10 minute podcast on uh, just 
what's going on in a hobby right now and just a few of my views and thoughts on some things and uh, if it's well received then we'll we'll do some more stuff I, I really enjoy the talking aspect as people you know people know I've had a few comments telling me that I need to stop talking and just show spiders and I think that that's just kind of not fun so um, yeah, so we'll end it here, and we'll we'll do a, a video announce or announcement video uh, directly after this one. Um, something that's coming up um, in about 500 subscribers, and then uh, something that I won, which is kind of cool because um, I generally don't win things, and I'll explain all that in the next video. So I hope, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know there wasn't a ton of stuff in here, but. Uh, I do have to do some serious checking. I got to do some watering and we got to do some feeding and I got fruit flies in the refrigerator. So I want to get those out and get the, the little slings fed and put back away and get them all watered up so they don't, uh, they don't uh, dehydrate on me. Oh, no, I don't want you over there. I'm going to get back in there. Kind of took off here. There you go. Okay, let me close you up before you decide you want to take off on me again. Get your claw in there. Get it in there. It's all over the place. So, thanks again, and um, happy keeping.